Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at the electric vehicle manufacturing that has been advancing in Africa. This video is to inform those among you who are uninformed on the advancement of electrification in Africa. Basi Go launches electric bus assembly plant to boost Kenya public transportation of electrification. Now this is quite impressive for a number of reasons, but I'll go into those. In the last few years, we've been seeing that electric vehicle manufacturing and assembling has been taken off in Africa and has continued to advance. Recently, Basi Go, a Kenyan electric vehicle mobility startup, has unveiled its electric bus production line at the Kenya Vehicle Manufacturing Plant in Thika, making the country's first specialized assembly plant for modern electric buses. Now, this development comes two weeks after Kenyan published and launched a draft of its national e-mobility policy, which is expected to encourage local production and assembly of electric vehicle within the country. The policy aim is to develop and review a legal and regulatory framework to facilitate EV adoption and to establish zero emissions vehicles, sales targets, investment criteria for domestic car manufacturing, and assemblers seeking government's incentives. Earlier this year in April, there's a report that stated electric vehicle manufacturing company would deploy 1,000 electric buses over the next three years to transform public transportation in East Africa. It also plans to assemble 1,000 e-buses in Kenya for local operation in the next three years, generating 300 green manufacturing jobs. So far, it has received over 500 orders from bus operators in Nairobi and 100 reservations from operators in Kigali, Rwanda. Now, this is also quite significant. To fully understand what has happened here, let me expand. Basi Go raised $3 million to boost EV bus rollout in East Africa. This is a significant investment within a company, but it's also a significant investment for the region of Africa, as this will have many connectivity effects. Now, we know that Basi Go is a Kenyan startup, but securing $3 million loan was an impressive milestone. This will help to enhance electric product. This will help to enhance electric bus production in Kenya and Rwanda. This was supported by the CFAO Kenya and Mobility 54. So the loan is primarily from the CFAO group. But I must say it is very, very promising at the moment for this company. With reservations in place for 600 buses, Basi Go plans to use the funding to expedite part deliveries and to ramp up production for its electric buses. So this significant investment will be a key provider to how productivity will enhance the company's overall portfolio. A lot of this news was initially published earlier this year, perhaps in March, in April, but I've noticed that there is a number of viewers out there whom are still uninformed. During the summer of this year, 2024, this was months after the electric bus company raised 6.5 million, which includes 5 million in debt from the British International Investment. Overall, this makes a sizable investment. That is a significant investment for an electric vehicle manufacturing company. And this will go well for the company in the coming future. The key thing that's driving this success is that there is a high demand for electrification within Africa. There's a high demand for electric vehicles, electric transportation system within Africa. And this is not just in transportation such as buses or motorcycles or bicycles. This is also in the space of trains. Recently, I made a report a few months ago that Tanzania has introduced electric trains into their lineup. This was a significant feat. As we know, these rail lines have been making steady improvement over the years with very much promising investments from outside sources, such as China. So some of the key takeaways. Now, this was an report from last year in April 2023. E-mobility race heats up in East Africa with over $50 million in startup cash. Keep in mind that this was last year after all. The African E-Mobility Alliance estimate that 40 Kenyan e-mobility startups have so far raised 52 million in capital financing, the highest in Africa, yet there are only 350 electric vehicles on Kenyan roads as of March 2023. However, I can promise you, 
in today, 2024, in October, it is significantly a different number. In comparison, at the time, Tanzania actually had 5,000 electric vehicle, yet it had only had 11 e-mobility companies, which so far has raised just 1 million in investments. Rwanda had about 900 EVs on its road, while Uganda, which is nine companies that have raised 5 million, also miles ahead of Kenya in e-mobility journey, or at least on the road at the time last year. The state of affairs is completely different from what we're looking at this year on a 2024 basis. Now this brings us on to a very important point. Uganda has actually been a big player in the electric vehicle space. Uganda has actually been manufacturing electric buses for quite a few years now. The problem is this has completely slipped under the radar, which is why I think it's very important to touch on these important points in our conversations. Link into this story. Tanzania set to gain from Uganda's groundbreaking electric bus plant. What do you need to know? Tanzania is well positioned to capitalize on the opportunity presented by East Africa's first electric vehicle manufacturing plant in Uganda. As the country has a reliable power supply and an abundant deposit of iron, coal, and strategical minerals, Tanzania is well positioned to capitalize on the opportunities presented by East Africa's first electric vehicle manufacturing plant in Uganda. As the country has a reliable power supply, so just in case you weren't fully made aware of this, Uganda is actually a very rich country with natural resources. For one, they do not lack electricity. Power is not something that they lack. They have a great amount of iron, coal, and other material within their country as well, including oil. Uganda is one of those countries that have all the material it needs to be prosperous. However, it lacks one important strategic location factor. Uganda is a landlocked country. So is Rwanda, which is why you'll often see these countries outdoing their counterpart. You'll often see these countries that are expanding beyond your imagination. They don't simply seek to do well. They simply seek to do better than anyone else. Because geographically, they're at a huge disadvantage. That being said, this is a huge accomplishment for the country of Uganda. The company in question is known as Kera Motor Corporation, a government entity based in Jinja. I apologize if I mispronunciate that word. However, this is the company that's manufacturing electric vehicles, believing that Tanzania has significant potential to benefit from its different aspects of value chain due to the power, reliability, Tanzania potential increase after Julius Nayera hydropower project commence operation and the abundance mineral deposit that could provide strategical minerals such as nickel, copper, cobalt, amongst others. And this is just to highlight the richness that lays within Tanzania also. But to get in some more technical details on this factory, the factory itself has so far made over 40 vehicles being used up country and commuter buses. They're operating in Kampala and they're looking to expand their manufacturing capabilities, of course. Now, Uganda is perfectly placed to be the manufacturing hub of Africa or one of the manufacturing hub of East Africa. Why is this? Well, it's quite simple. Whatever they manufacture, they can sell to their neighboring country, such as Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania. They have so many countries that are surrounding them. This provides them with an abundance of customer to work with. Now, at the time, the factory had been manufacturing 250 vehicles a month and about 3,000 vehicles annually, noting that the plans had been to attain 5,000 annual production. But the thing is that it takes time to develop your factory and to improve manufacturing ability, to improve the rate of speed of which you can complete a manufacturing product. It takes some time to understand this, to understand the weaknesses and to improve on critical areas, to optimize for efficiency within an electric vehicle manufacturing factory. So I'm sure that these factories will continue to manufacture more and more vehicle on an annual basis, but they're still new at doing this. But over time, this skill will just continue to increase. So that in itself is groundbreaking news. So both countries are set to benefit based on future partnerships. Now, just to close out this video, we want to take out the top 10 EV manufacturing in the Middle East and Africa. Number 10 on today's list is KP Motors. This is based in Tanzania. 
and they've managed to manufacture the first locally made electric vehicle. While it might not look like much, the key thing to keep in mind is that how quickly the night can change. These vehicles are often good to get down the principle of the engineering aspects of manufacturing electric vehicles, but the technology the platform within can be utilized in so many different ways one could not fully imagine until one could see that possibility. So keep an eye on these companies. You have One Motor Technology in Dubai, UAE. You've got EB, Nairobi, Kenya. They manufacture bikes, and that's a story within itself. If you'd like to learn more about that, let me know, and I might make a video on that subject. There is Iwaka in Nairobi, Kenya. There is Mobility for Africa in Zimbabwe. There is Spyro in Kenya, Togo, Benin, and Rwanda. Again, Spyro is a motorcycle manufacturer of electric vehicles. There's Basigo in Kampala, Uganda. There's Rome in Nairobi, Kenya. There's Sandstorm in Dubai. And there's W Motors in Dubai. For one, I bet you didn't know that Dubai was manufacturing this many electric vehicles or just vehicles within the Middle East. But also that Africa is manufacturing so many different electric vehicles. And like I said, keep an eye on these companies because five to 10 years from now, it will look completely different and you will not believe it's the same company that has been doing these things. But they will advance and they will improve. So I look forward to seeing that inevitability. Thank you for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything specifically you'd like me to make videos on, leave it in the comments and join the community by subscribing and leaving a like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in our next video.